Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scene tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your hosts, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to Inside the Firm. I am your co-host, Alex Gore. I'm, whole, I'm here with the head honcho, the man himself, Lance Ligeti Psycho. Everyone calls him Ligeti. The guy who doesn't even have his microphone up to his up to his mouth, but now I do. There you go. I wasn't even ready for Al's little intro. Uh, first things first is that if you are stuck in uh, 1996. Wow. <clears throat> and then You're like, definitely not trading stocks with Robin Hood. <laughs> ho ho. Nope. But even if you are, are you? <laughs> are you? I was wondering how I was going to sneak that in there. There it is. There Al it opened goes. it. Opened it up. Well, how do you know if you're stuck in 1996? Like, how, how, how do you know? Like, if you're stuck in there, you don't even know what the future looks like. So you wouldn't know that you're stuck in the past. Mm-hmm. So there's one test mm-hmm. to see if you're in, stuck in 1996. Ask yourself, am I still using AutoCAD? Because and- if you are. You might be in 1996. You might be in 1996. Your website, uh, you might be, it might be using AOL. Is your email address something? Is is it, is it AutoCAD user at AutoCAD user 74 at uh, AOL.com? Might be. Yep. Al, but uh, AutoCAD, I'm fast with it. You know, it's quick, whatever. It's what I'm used to. And hey, you know what? I don't have to have this perpetual license with Revit. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Drawing a scribble on a napkin is quick. Yep. Napkins are cheap. Napkins are cheap. There's a lot of things that are quick. There's a lot of things that you know how to do. Doesn't mean that you should do them that way in the future. I mean, we I update our website every two to three years because I don't want to have. Let that. me tell you about how good he is at websites. So good, so good that like I don't even think I should ever have to do any work on the website because like I will f it up. That the truth comes out. And if you agree with me, write to me at LMC at F9 Productions. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that's where I play this game with my wife. Like, yeah, I should. I mean, I try to clean up. Oh, I yeah. do that too. I'm like, babe, I'm real bad at cleaning out the you're, bathroom. Uh, you're the best. I'm good at cooking supper, though. What do you think? Hey, what do you think, hon? Yeah. You're making like, all right. You're pretty good. Kind of getting off topic. <sighs> Back on topic. If you, in all seriousness, <laughs> if you want to learn Revit, go to RevitRocketShip.com. We train you. You get our template. The the improvements that we are making to our template will make you more powerful, will make you more competent, and will create uh, basically a better workflow environment for you. Revit has a learning curve, and it can be hard. Revit Rocketship makes it way, way smoother and sets you up for the future. RevitRocketship.com. Boom. Bam. Every day, more architecture professionals are adding ArtCat to their workflow to save them time and money. ArtCat helps designers, specifiers, and architects compare and select the best products for their projects. We're using their powerful search engine. They also offer data files like BIM, CAD. That's right, if you're still using AutoCAD. But you could also use BIM, Revit, and specifications right on the same site for free without registration. Visit ArtCat.com today and see why so many professionals are consolidating their product search to one task only. That is, visit ArcCat.com. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com and start building better content today. Not yesterday, today. Today, nice. Just to give all the listeners a heads up. Heads up. I decided, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to schedule my contractor's test. Wow. I'm going to do it. Yep. And I was like, should I give myself one month to study? I mm. thought that was appropriate, but I go, that seems about right. I go, that seems about all right, but you know, things come up, you know, there's different things in my life going on in work. Maybe I'll give myself two months and I go, let me look at the schedule and see what options I have. Mm. So I go to sign up. It's actually kind of cumbersome and weird. And, uh, there's a difference between tests that I'll tell you about. And it gave me the option of taking a test in five days or five months from now. So I obviously chose five days. Wow. <laughs> so I'm taking a contractor's test on Monday. So if you listen to next podcast, you will hear the results of either me whimpering or me in victory. Um, and then 
honestly, if, if I pass it, I think next week we're launching the architect to builder course. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put in the architect builder course, what I did to study next month, how to study next month. We are launching it. Not next week, February 12th. Oh fe- yeah. Next month, next month. The 12th. It feels like a week to Al because this is his, this is where he's at in his life, right? Five months or five days. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, so the 12th, we're launching that. So next on Friday, you'll know how it's going. Uh, so that's what's happening. One one thing that I will give you, because I signed up for the wrong test, there are three different tests for the co- contractor's license B. There are the W-12, the F-12, and then the W-84, if I'm remembering correctly. It might not be that specific number. But you can get, there's a 12, there's a W-12, F-12, maybe Lance is looking up, and W-84. The W-12 is for 2012 codes. The F-12 they should just put what year it is. Why do a code number? Like instead yeah. of saying contractors B F twelve, just say contractors B twenty eighteen because that's what the twelve seems means. really simple to me. Wow. Yep. Two two seconds. I took the F twelve. Yep. I'm taking the F twelve. Yeah. Now. Which is the same thing. Class B. Yeah. We've went over this. I think. Uh, class C. You can do a single family. Class B. Commercial buildings, multifamilies, up to three stories. Class A. Sky's the limit. Yep. Uh, Literally. So and then the eighty four is for the two thousand eighteen. Yes, because fifteen F twelve is fifteen. Yes, that's the yep. one I took. W twelve is twenty twelve. Yep. Um, so know that, and then also I I brought this up to the guys. They weren't as as enthusiastic about it, but I, I'm wondering if if you would like it, if, if you like the idea. Oh, so when I was studying for it, mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's a lot of code questions, it, it, and and I think that's cool. But some of the stuff was like, it was like me going back in my mind and opening up an old attic because I had to remember, like, let's say a third of these questions are stuff that is very close to the studying for the ARE. Very, very close. So I'm like, okay, wait, I I remember that like I had down pat and I still kind of do like, okay, uh, type three is common construction. Oh yeah. Right. And, And I still knew that, but like, it's literally like I had to go and think like, am I right? Am I remembering this right or not? So back in the day, you used to have to take seven tests to be an architect. Now mm-hmm. you have to take six. Six, yep. So I told those guys and girls, why stop at six? Just write, what's the difference between six and seven? Your last test should be the contractor's license B test. Mm-hmm. You're already in the mode. It will <clears throat> automatically, like all that information will be there. Just get that done and over with. What do you think? Honestly, I think every question relates to what we're doing because it's code questions. No, because the, 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 the thinking is different. The thinking what? is different with the architecture tests. What the, do you mean? You, uh, the, the, what, what I, uh, it, I wish the architecture test would just stop lying to us, the, the thought process behind it. So right now the thought process, this is my opinion, obviously. Uh, this is not fact, but it's my opinion. It's my fact that... Um, it's for the health, welfare, and safety. And it's that, but it's also, again, this like instilling this, this very critical level of thinking process that architects need to have because we understand ripple effects. And we understand when you make one decision, it's going to have a cascade of effects. And that's the difference between you and, say, a novice developer or a novice builder. So... Here, I, here, I, I understand uh, that it didn't help, but I'm just telling you that's really what I think. I'll, I'll give you my secret reason. Okay. Here's my secret reason. The The thing that this test is training me for is, and they say, like, you, you cannot memorize the whole code, right? Yeah, it's impossible. So how do you memorize codes? And the questions that we get is, okay, where in the code is that going to be? And where do I find that mm-hmm. in the code? Where do I find the information that is relative to to building life, safety, and welfare. Yeah. Where do I find that? How do I find that efficiently? I secretly think that that contractor test should replace one. There you go. I, what I, that's a, I was hoping you were going there. I was going to say two, but one. Yeah, but sure, two is even. It better, could but, replace one. That is a. But it has to be the class B. So it has to be the class B. So you cannot do the class C as a replacement. As of now, we do not have that power. So my logic goes. Since I believe this is true, that it helps you 
with the life safety and welfare, mm-hmm. and it helps you be extremely familiar <coughs> and helps you be uh, so comfortable with the code mm-hmm. that as a professional, you should do it, and the best time to do it is r- r- right after doing your AREs because so, it's already you're already in the study mode, and some of the stuff you're already thinking about, it's easier to get in your brain. That's why. That- if I had my own way, I would just have it replace it. Like you replace one of them. But since you can't, and since I believe it's that valuable, then you should do it right after. Is that why the F9ers didn't like it? Is because it was right after. They were just exhausted from, like Mark, for example. I mean, I was the same way too. You get burnt out. It's relieving, but you're burnt out of tests. Well, <clears throat> yes, but here's what talking to all the new people that haven't haven't started. In your, like, if, they, if ARE told you you had to do seven tests, then it's just in your mind. Like you're going to do seven tests. Everyone pass. 2012 did seven tests. You know what I mean? So it before not, 2012. Before 2012. Yeah. yeah. Or whenever it was. Whenever matter. it was, yeah. So so what's the difference? Like if you go into your head, like you have to start it this way. Yes, I get what you I get what you're saying. Men- mentally prepare, just sort of lie yeah. to yourself. So if if you haven't started, don't think that you have to do six tests. Think you have to do seven and add the B to it. There you go. Hmm. Um, but aren't you going to talk, weren't you going to tell us a little bit more about, um, schedule, like what you should do to get scheduled properly, how you're, how you're studying any tips? I can't. Well, if not, no, I just thought, well, the only thing is I can tell you what I'm doing, but like, did I pass it or not? I don't know. Oh, okay. Stay tuned. (laughs) Stay tuned. <laughs> maybe, maybe then, you, maybe then, if we find out if you passed, which I think he's gonna pass. By the way, yeah. uh, he should pass. Like, it's it's. If you're a trained architect, once again, if you are a trained architect, if you are a licensed architect, if you have, if you have, if you have been involved at even at just a cursory level doing construction administration, I think you can pass this test. It's not about the processes. It's not about, and that's that's the mystery. It's not about the sequence of construction. And that's the part where really you need to understand about being a contractor is the sequence of construction and understanding what comes before what, what comes after what, what to be aware of. And that's what we're, that, that's what we are going to help everybody out with, with the Architect to Builder course. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. Cool. Uh, special announcement, huge announcement. Uh, congratulations. This is, a, this is an email, uh, sub, our title that I got. Congratulations, Eastwatch is a nominee for the 2021 Building of the Year Awards. Dear F9 Productions, we have some exciting news with, to share with you. Eastwatch House is a nominee for the Arc Daily 2021 Building of the Year Awards. And here you can find house vote, the house Eastwatch House voting link so you can spread the news. So for, every, for all the listeners out there, for all our listeners' friends, all our listeners' family, we would be uh, so thankful for you if you voted for us in the building of the year. Uh, so if you go to arcdaily.com, A-R-C-H-D-A-I-L-Y.com, uh, right now I've got it pulled up on the, on the screen here. Uh, one of the first things you're going to see in their graphics right in the bottom right-hand corner is building of the year. So if you click there for vote, vote here on building of the year, then if you would go down to houses, and then you can sort them. They don't make it too easy. Then you can sort them. Um, by country, and so if you if you sort to the United States and click filter, then you should be able to find us. Uh, I'm trying hard here. It looks like it didn't come up. You can sort by, and then uh, you can also sort by architecture office, and you sh- then you should be able to find F9 Productions. Hit the filter, and make that happen. I think the other way you could do it is if you just go back to ArcDaily.com. I'll try to make this two different ways arcdaily.com and just type in F9 Productions and yep there's Eastwatch and I think you can click on it and then right above when I clicked on it you can click uh, uh, nominee and then once you click nominee then you can they, the way they so voting it you have to nominate to vote that's how it works so yeah we, we would love it if you guys helped us win that award for us that would be a lifetime achievement and for some reason uh, Eastwatch, even though we're nominated when, when you search in the united states like it isn't coming up on the first couple pages so like this is a way to help out <laughs> yes please help <laughs> us out so again just go to arcdaily.com you can click on the search right away type in um f9 productions find find our Eastwatch project 
It is a super modern uh, custom house. Click on the nominee banner above it and then nominate us and we would we would really appreciate that. Yeah. Cool. Lessons from the army, Al. Well, you know, like uh, people ask, like you asked before. Yeah. Uh, if you could take you knowing what you know now, if you go go back and not be in the army, you know, would you or would you not? Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, I still would because of the lessons that you learn, right? Yeah. And the same thing is true like when you put like all these different things from karate to football to whatever, whatever you do to being a contractor, you know, what are the lessons that you learned even if it didn't, didn't work out? And I think one of the key, th- and I wanted to tell you a story. Lance has heard probably some of these, but like what it puts together is is something bigger meaning you could read a book and i could say oh that book taught me to be prepared right but like how deeply did you learn that lesson like what you read a chapter and now you think that you should be prepared right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so just going back story time with al nice how did how did the army teach me to be prepared right so i signed up when i was 17 and they said hey you don't have to come until like after football season, mm-hmm. right? Because they understood my schedule, you know, football, you're doing all this stuff. And I, and I decided like one, one weekend, like, oh, I'll go. I'll, you know, like no big deal. Like I'm in football shape. Like what's, what's the big deal here, yep. right? So you just show up to drill uh, at, at the base on, on Friday night, uh, check in, you know, whatever, just nothing. Wake up at like four and do exercises, right? D- typical army stuff. <clears throat> then you eat breakfast. And then everyone breaks out in their groups and stuff, right? So I'm the new guy and my brother was in that, in that unit. People from uh, the grade older were in that unit. So they knew me. And then my, my cousins used to be in that unit. And Holy cow. <laughs> one of my teachers, her boyfriend was in that unit. So like I was a known commodity, which, <laughs> <laughs> which was not helpful to oh, me man, whatsoever. Bet, yeah. I'm sure you got harassed. So <laughs> I get harassed doing bear crawling the whole gym crab walking the whole gym doing push-ups doing leg ups doing you know mule kicks all that kind of stuff while everyone else is doing their things and then they give me the uh m40 machine gun with the metal tripod and my own rifle and basically show me how that system works and now i'm carrying this breaking this down running carrying this breaking down running going back and forth back and forth and all that happens by noon. So I sit down at noon and I'm sitting across from the dock for some reason, just like, just happened to be, he's like, you don't look so good. He's, he's like, we should put an IV in you. Wow. And the guy next to him goes, no, he's fine. You should have saw the guy that they were kicking his ass earlier this morning. And, and I pointed I go, same guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the doc goes, we should really put an IV in yeah. you. And I go, no, because like, I just did it while when I go, no, I'm fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So then after lunch, the same cycle continues. Wow. So like I get my butt kicked, then I'm running around with this heavy tripod, this machine gun and my gun. And they didn't tell me till later, like, oh, that's a three man system. We just made you do it. (laughs) And then I don't like this goes like at night. This goes on like now we're out doing maneuvers and I'm the machine gunner yep. and everyone, everyone like fake dies because like we did it the wrong way. So they tell me to run up to reinforce the line and I didn't realize there was barbed wire there. So then I got stuck in the barbed wire Yeah. and then they're like, okay, you all, you all are terrible. You all died. Here's what y'all did wrong. Right. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, wrap it up and go to sleep. So then I go to sleep a couple hours later, I wake up. And I run to the bathroom and I throw up and I just puke because, you know, like I'm exhausted and then someone gives me a bucket. So I bring that bucket back to my bed. I wake up a couple hours later, I puke in the bucket Mm -hmm. and then I walk that bucket to go throw out the throw up and the bucket has a hole in it. So then I get a mop and I mop that up. I do that three times. I wake up in the morning, like I'm just dead. My brother just takes me home. I sleep till like noon, right? That was it. So then like after that, I go, man, I'm, I don't know if I was prepared for that. (laughs) I don't know if that was what was going on. Like if, 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 if I was prepared. So then in February, I was like, you know, like now, now it starts, I go back and we go up to a training in Minnesota 
And basically different drills, but the same shit happens all day because everyone knows me, right? Mm. <clears throat> and then I come back to my bunk at night and I see someone's bunk ripped up and I laugh until I realize it's my it's bunk. It's yours, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And not only did they rip my bunk apart, they took, they took the bunk apart. Like I had to put the metal things back together, right? And then finally I fall asleep <clears throat> and then I, I dream. I didn't know I was dreaming. I dream my whole day again. Like I'm oh getting God. yelled at. Oh God. Like all this is happening. Oh no. And I wake up and I'm like, oh, that was a dream. Thank God. And right when I say that, the lights turn on and the next day starts. And I'm like, this is my nightmare. <laughs> like, wow. Like literally my, like my nightmare yep. is happening, right? Yep. Inception. So then after that, I realized like, okay, uh, I really need to get prepared because basic training is happening. And that actually was like a precursor, like get ready for basic training. Yeah. Like, so not only are my days going to be screwed, which like you automatically knew, like you're not even safe at the night. Yep. You're not even safe. Mm -hmm. So every morning from February until April, whenever I went to basic training, woke up at 4 a.m. I got a backpack, black back one, filled it full of books, went on like a five mile hike and then went to school, went to the weight room before school started. Right. Basic training started. Obviously, crazy shit happens, like uh, foaming at the mouth because they're just exhausted and get kicked out, you know, uh, running their heads in the buildings, uh, doing 50-50 fire guard, which means you used to have eight hours of sleep. You have four hours of sleep uh, for the last four weeks of basic training, so you get like four hours of sleep. Because of that preparedness and because I knew like this stuff could get really crazy because of, you know, what they were doing to me at the end. Previous. Uh, uh, yeah. Yep. I was the only one that was awake on the last day to wake up everyone, you know, for it. In advanced individual training, which is right next to it, they said they gave me, well, one, the drill sergeant yelled at everyone and said, you guys all made Mr. Gore and this other guy do a bunch of push-ups for you guys being idiots. Yeah. And... They, the certificate, I, they probably do this in every class, but they get the top, if you're in the top 95%, like you're in the top 5%, yes. which means if there's only 60 of you, you're either number one or number two. Right. Like the math, th yep. th that, one that's how the by math works. Yep. Yeah, and that's what I got. So yeah. like when, if someone says like, the, like, Hey, what did this teach you? Yeah. Like, like, Oh, it taught me to be prepared. Like how deeply did it teach you to be prepared? Yeah. Because that was a deep, deep lesson. Yeah. And I remember that because like sometimes like I, I'll get mad, like let's say we show up and I'm not even as prepared as I was back then. Obviously, like that was I was 18, 17 that I'm a baby is closer to going into the army than than I am right now. But so, you know, I'd love to get even more prepared, but like I'll get mad sometimes like angry. And it's like, I don't know if people have learned like learn that lesson that freaking hard. You know what I mean? I don't think I don't I think very small so just like your per, the percentage it got narrowed down to when you won when you won that when you mm. got that i think it's also very very slim yeah yeah so if you go through any of those processes if if you go through anything like that outside of the army it doesn't matter like a very like a big hardship or something like that uh financial hardship who knows like like you find a spouse is cheating um something where yeah. basically it is catastrophic it is catastrophic, right? Because what you just described to me was that was pretty catastrophic. It was kind of a shock to yeah. your to your system, right? Um, so if you aren't, if somehow you come out of that and you don't learn, if you there's something not ingrained in you to be prepared, or you're stronger, or you're ready to you're ready to face any kind of adversity that comes at you from there, then I, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if you. I don't know if you really you haven't taken advantage you haven't respected what the universe gave you i yeah. see those as gifts if yes you, if you get through them and don't you know go to a super bad place and never come back yep and and i think there's also a lesson so those, those are forced lessons meaning like i signed up once and yeah. then all that stuff happened right but there's also like people are working on on themselves and it doesn't have to be prepared it could be oh um I want to intellectually know this. I want to, you know, all these different uh, attributes that you could have. Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's say they're not working out for you. Start to think, how hard am I learning this lesson? How can I learn this lesson even harder? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, 
I, I wish I could think for some reason, I'm not thinking about something that you want to grow at, you know, like name something in your head. Do you have anything like it doesn't have to be you. I would like to be able to go fishing and catch a fish every single time I go instead of getting skunked. Right. Literally to the point where like, well, I might not do, I might not have 50 fish on the ice at the end of the day, right. which is legal, but you know what I'm getting my point. Right. But I at least caught one. Right. So, so I know that you're kind of doing this, but let's say, let's say you wanted that. Let's say you just said that in your head or you kind of knew that, but literally every time you weren't going fishing, like you never thought about it. You never researched. You never watched yes. people on YouTube. You never yes. got got the gear to find the fish. Yes. You never then like you could literally, you could literally go so far to learn this lesson is that you could buy yourself, and I'm not saying you learn this way, but I'm just giving examples. You could buy yourself a stupid fish journal, and every time you're done fishing, you write down where you were, what you did, did it result in it or not, and then maybe you start to see patterns, yep. right? And maybe you don't have to go that far, but maybe you do have maybe to go. Maybe you that. do have to go that far. Absolutely. You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. How, how deeply are you learning your lessons? Yeah. Well, one of my life goals, and this is kind of a, because I think this would help me come full circle in my life, especially with my mom, is if, if I ever got paid to fish, meaning somebody paid me to be their guide, that's mm-hmm. one version of it, right? I, or if I started a YouTube channel like some of these other people who are, who, uh, by the way, some of the YouTube channels are just amazing. Like yeah. I'm look, I'm looking at them and they've democratized the fishing channels, uh, business wise. Like you used to have a big sponsor behind you at Bass Pro Shops or something. Sure. So, but being able to get to that point for me would be a huge. So, so a lot of the things you described, like, no, I'm, I'm taking it that seriously. Like I want to make, before my mom dies, one of my goal, one of my life goals now is to get paid have that first dollar. I'm going to frame it. I'm going to, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to give it to my mom. Okay. Like, there you go. Professional fisherman. Told you. <laughs> just, just, a, just a question. Yeah. Why does your mom care if you're a professional? She, that is her thing about me and fishing. Is she goes, because ask her the next time. Ask her when we're at home the next time. Yeah. Especially if we're fishing. Because we she, probably we will. will be. Yeah. For paddle fishing in May. Yeah. Ask her, BZ, what did Lance want to be when he grows up? She will tell you. Oh. Professional fisherman. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Not architect. Yep. Even though, you know, we've already talked about all that. But. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, good stuff, Val. Uh, Man, a good story. Yeah. That was great. I'd I'm, never heard that before. Believe it or not, ladies and gents, Al and I have been friends for, I don't know, almost 20 years and I haven't heard it. Right. And and there's difference too. Like there might be like little bi- bits and pieces in that, but like once you put that all together, mm. you know what I mean? Um, it's something different. Anyways, uh, I was thinking about this concept too that I want to talk to you about. Yeah. And I didn't know how to phrase this, and I don't know if this is necessarily true, if this is the final phrase. But <clears throat> before I give you the phrase, what prodded this is, I was literally de- dealing with building planning officials the in a best. city unknown, not to be named. <laughs> not my local town, I'll give you that. Rhymes with Menver. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. <clears throat> smart, smart people, intelligent people can write. Graduated college. Ha, literally have probably have some of them have PhDs in master planning. Sure. Yeah. Yep. We have been playing a game of continual whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole. And I don't mean like you submit comments and then they give you comments and then then you do them and you resubmit it. Like that is that is normal. But when they say, oh yeah, we've approved that. But for some reason, because we changed something or it's been this many times, you have to resubmit for a reapproval, even though you haven't changed anything. And once you do that, you need to resubmit to the other department to make sure that nothing changed because of that. Then someone retired, so you have to resubmit. Then someone re-retired again, so you have to resubmit. And and I, like, I just lost it. <laughs> and Al's, Al, Al doesn't lose his temper off very often, but when he does, then it's scary. It's yeah. actually scarier than me because everybody's ready for it. Yeah. And like trying to explain, trying to explain that this should not be the process and we aren't putting up with this Mm -hmm. is, is insanity and is unacceptable. And, and, and for you not to get this insanity because you're, because you're trying to uninsane the definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over again and getting no results. Yep. Yep. And, and literally just like, for them to just, you know, hey, we'll just ask this department and see what they said. Who's in charge here? Oh. Who is in charge here? What is happening? 
like this cannot happen anymore. Uh, because they said, yeah, a year of inactivity. So, you know, you have a p- permit and you'll be going for multiple different approvals. Yes. Right. Multiple so you, so this is the exact scenario. We got approval on one and then all these other ones, a couple other ones made us do all this stuff on the same project. And then one will come up and be like, <clears throat> oh, you haven't had any activity for a year. So now you have to resubmit. No, no, we've been making activity this whole time. Just because these others have been making us resubmit doesn't mean there hasn't been activity on this. Like you, you're, you know, literally holding me with one hand. And then once you release that other hand, say, oh, ah, gotcha. Gotcha on the other hand. Right. So then I started going, I was like, they, they have allowed this system. They think that this is okay. They haven't fixed it. Right. And these people are not smart. I mean, these people are smart. They're nor- smart people. I don't even think they're malicious or anything like yeah. that. I'm sure we'd have a beer and it'd be just fine. Yeah. What is going on? And the concept is your environment determines your level of excellence. Your environment does, right? And it has to do with your experience too, but I just want to stick on this one concept, right? So Dan Carlin, mm-hmm. the history podcast. Yep. You listen to the Mongols. Hard, hardcore history. Yep. Yep. A while ago. Yep. He basically laid on, he goes, the generals that Genghis Khan had and the battles they had and their brilliance, like these might be like five of his generals might make the top 10 generals of all time. Hmm. Like that's how good these people were. Mm-hmm. And you hear that story and then you hear that like Spielberg, uh, these are um, movie directors, George Lucas, Marcus Scorsese. So there was a couple others. They were all friends. They would all talk. They would all put things, you know, together and, and critique all, you know, their different ideas some people might say you know think george lucas and star wars is overrated but he did indiana jones also he did uh he did a couple well, of the, the, the first ones are not over overrated those are right. those are groundbreaking when disney got a hold of the last ones yeah besides rogue one <clears throat> so that environment of those people putting together like literally like some of the best directors of all times oh <clears throat> and it was because of their environment of them grouping together right um, and and their process. Pixar. Pixar had a stream of like eight. Their first eight movies were like the best animated movies, the best top growth, you know, uh, Dory, Toy Story. Like their first eight movies, Cars, were all success, right? And you could say like, oh, they happened to just get, because there was different directors. They happened to get the 10 best directors in a row all in one place at one time. What are the odds that Pixar somehow had the 10 best, yep. you know, right? So what is it? It's your environment. The environment, just like with the Mongols, like, oh, his environment, the system that they set up, the time frame allowed for people to rise to the occasion. And with the planning department, this is where I'm going in the opposite that proves the same rule is like, oh, you could be smart people. You could be the greatest planner of all time. Put yourself in that system. You're going to make the dumbest decisions ever. And have the, you know, like the dumbest logic ever. So the concept for the the talk, the discussion is what are you doing for your environment to allow yourselves to have the 10 best colleagues ever? You know what I mean? I know. I do. And I do know. And do you buy that concept that the environment? A hundred percent. No, no. Here's why. I'm going to bring it back one more time here. Watch me do it. Back to fishing. (laughs) I'm not joking. Okay. Whenever I go with somebody who who somebody who uh, knows a lake better than me or a river better than me, and here's here's the example. <clears throat> so, <laughs> two or three weeks ago, my son, you know, my son and I were out on this lake north of us. Um, we 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 did all the things Alex was talking about. We mapped every all the points out. I I had I had my fish brain app. I knew exactly where to go on the ice. I drilled holes. I found we found the best structure. We found some fish. We couldn't get the fish to bite. And I start looking over off in the distance and these two kids, literally kids, like 18, 17, 18, I, they probably were just barely driving. They walk down on the ice and I just observe them for a little bit and I'm like, I feel like these kids know this lake. Like you could just tell the way they walked around the area. They didn't seem lost, right? They right. could just said they, you, you could sense, you could sense they, they knew their environment. So I got to talking to the one of the kids. Sure enough, they were the first people on the ice 
I got a little tip from them about when I when when and where you can find all the walleyes, and it's only for like a day or two, and then they all scatter because it gets hit so hard in Colorado. So yes, in that in that like teaming up with people and learning from other people who who have already maybe other they've teamed up with other people and 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 know all of the ins and outs and everything. So critical. Okay, one one more little one. Mm-hmm. There's this forum that I'm on. It's fishexplorer.com. I have a fishing trip planned next weekend uh, up in the mountains. Never been to this lake. Sure enough, in the forum, it's like like you said, staying on top of like reading as much as you can, learning as much as you can, getting just in, in like, if you want to excel and be a master at something, getting just immersing yourself in it like Al's doing. Al's just like, he bought these uh, sample tests and he'll tell you about them maybe next week when he passes. Yeah, I'm studying three hours a day. It's insane, right? Yeah. But th- that's what you got to do. So I'm on this forum there's a post about that lake and ice fishing and sure enough there's a guy and it's his his um his his handle is boulder trout or something like that and and he he's like hey i don't want to go up to this lake by myself cuz ice fishing you shouldn't do that it's very dangerous and he's like i don't want to go up from by myself and I, so like so i replied back and i go email me we're going up there in 2 weeks yeah just like let's see yeah uh and sure enough, he emails back and forth. This guy has been out there many, many times. He is crushed. And now we've funneled it down to like, he's been there so many times and and been so, and had so much so good success. And he, he's also a professor at CU. So like this oh, small, hilarious. it's awesome. Yeah. And so now, now he and I have coordinated over the past week in emails and stuff. And like, oh, we're actually going to go to this other lake because the other three lakes we were originally going to go to are going to get hammered by uh, tournaments. So the fish are going to be just like way too overloaded. We're we're honing in. We're learning. I'm learning from other people. You didn't even think I'd get like three fishing things in on this podcast. She said no, no idea, <laughs> no idea. We were going that deep. Yep. In the water. Yep. Speaking yeah. of deep in water, and a man who <sighs> swims, <laughs> swims in knowledge, in in colloquialism. He's got to swim because it, 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 the shortness in the water. Oh pull, yeah, he can't. A pool you, you, over you, three you, feet is a danger to this. Alan Nick just big problems in the deep water. Yeah, good thing we're good swimmers. <laughs> good thing. All right, let's hear from Nick. It's Nick Reeds. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. Of reading. When my time on Earth is gone, and my activities here are past, I want they bury me upside down. And my critics can kiss my ass. Bob Knight, former head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. Toodles! Bobby Knight. Wait, wait, time out. Is Bob Knight the same guy Bobby that gets Knight. red face kind of a throws the guy, chairs? Throws the chairs. Did he go to Hoosiers. Texas Tech too? Yes. Yes. Get, uh, did he go? Let's look that up. I don't want to. Yeah, Bob. and I'll continue. Gets kicked out of games all the time. Yes. <laughs> Did he go to Texas Tech? He Bob went Knight. to... No, coached. Yeah, he's a coach. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he switched from Indiana. Did he? Uh, Bobby Knight. Oh, Texas Tech. You're right. He yep. went to Texas Tech 2001, 2008. There you go. Yep. Uh, yeah, but he was the guy that threw the chairs. Good for Very him. Very good. Speaking of which, I should... You know what movie I want to watch that I haven't watched for a while? Let me know. You remember Blue Chips? What's Dude. blue chips? Oh. oh, Nick Nolte, Shaq, Anthony Hardaway, blue chips. Look it up. It's a 1994 American basketball drama film. What? I feel like you read that right off the Wikipedia. I feel like I did too. Man, is it good? Is it good? Or is it? Is it like? Was the 90s? So is it okay. 90s good or Let's actually decide. good? Okay. Uh, either between blue chips or what was the football movie? Remember the football movie with? The quarterback who, uh, he was like, he would ride a motorcycle and he was kind of a drunk. Um, and then the one big guy took steroids in 1994, 1990s, that one too, you know what I'm talking uh, about? Nice. Football movies, 1990s. This is not, um, the program. Oh, okay. Ooh. So I thought you were talking about Varsity Blues, just to be honest. That's all, that's good too. But if we're, uh, what I'm saying, so 1993, the program, right? Uh, several players from each background from sorry, yeah, several players from different backgrounds try to cope with the pressures of playing football at a major university. Each deals with pressure differently. 
Some turn to drinking, others turn to drugs, and some to studying. Oh, now, I don't know which ones oh, I'm going to... Oh, and the guy who paints, like, the yes! war face on Remember him? Remember him? God. This is hilarious. It is, I feel like this is why Bobby Boucher made Bobby Boucher. I got to watch the program. Oh, absolutely. I think, it, I think it was a spoof off of that, yeah. 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 Very cool. You should watch the program. Okay. Yeah. What do we got? Oh, we got an Area Jeopardy next. Let's bring down the crew. Let's bring down the crew. Question one. What is the clear head height for spi- uh, for spiral stairs? Is it A, 66 inches, B, 6 foot 8 inches, C, 6 foot 6 inches, D, 7 foot? The clear height, head height for stairs. Spiral. Spiral stairs. Good. Good, good, good. Are we ready? All right, lift B. it up. Wait, D? B. B, C, 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 B. It is C, six foot six inches. All those basements. Look at that. Okay. Question two floor to floor, not floor to ceiling, floor to floor heights for conventional light frame construction. Shall not exceed blank feet. Conventional light frame stick built construction shall not exceed, right? I'm not talking about LVLs. I'm not talking about LSLs, all that, right? A, 10 foot, 7 inches. B, 10 foot, 6 inches. C, 11 foot. D, 11 foot, 7 inches. If you have the IBC, you can find this in structural. There is a section called conventional light frame construction. In there is the answer. None of these people have the book, so they cannot do that. All right. We got 11 foot. We got 11 seven. We got 10 six, 11 and 11. It is 11 foot seven. Who had that? Ross. Was that a guess or did you know? Total guess. Total guess. Now you know. Now you know where to find it, more importantly. Um, My turn? Yes. Yay! Rebecca, that would no oh no's. Uh, yeah. Three. Number three. What is the term for the rating that combines multiple uh, values from across the frequency spect- spectrum, weights them, and compiles one number to address all the octave bands? Everybody should actually know this because this will be on the ARE test, I promise. Is it A, sound transmission class? Is it B, normalized noise reduction? Is it C, noise isolation class? Or D, transmission loss? And does anybody, doesn't look like anybody needs a repeat. That's good. What do we got? We have A, A, B, A, A. Correct answer is A. There you go. Good call, right? STC ratings, very important. Uh, Number four, people are generally annoyed by sounds that are A, created by sources the listeners cannot see, B, unpredictable, C, generated by people whom listeners do not have a favorable attitude to begin with, or D, all of the above. (laughs) What a subjective. (laughs) (laughs) I just read it. I made it real. Uh, D, D, what'd you do? D, D, C, D, D. correct answer is D. All right. All of the above. How many? Four. You got all four Oh my God, Ross. No one else has four? Ross wins. Where are we? Hey, hey. Diner. Diner time. Diner time. Greasy spoon. Here we come. Is that what it's called? No, that's what I, no, it's not. It's Alice's, but it's delicious. There should be a diner called the Greasy Spoon. Absolutely. That's a great name. Absolutely. So, uh, you want to play Nick Reed's? For, I mean, Nick Nick's ad for Revit? Yes. Right after, I once again recommend you either watch Blue Chips or The Program this weekend, and maybe both of them. Enjoy some early 90s sports movies. Talk to you next week. Best friends, are you a growing studio like we are at Dig? Are you hiring people with Revit experience only to find out they don't use the tool like you do? Are you losing time and money? 
Well, friends, that's a problem. And it's one we shared with you until we invested in Revit Rocket Ship. That's right, friends, Revit Rocket Ship. Revit Rocket Ship is officially the unofficial training method for all new hire dig teammates. It gives us a great foundation to build on and gets our team modeling in Revit with the same methodology oh so quickly. Plus, the Revit Rocket Ship package comes with all this really cool bonus stuff and a personalized autograph headshot from Al Gore. The short, cool one. And friends, I can't believe I'm doing this. Al is not going to be a happy camper. But for an unlimited time, and for my best friends, if you use the promo code DIG at checkout, free high fives for life. And upon hitting the buy now button, if you reach up in the air with a hand extended for a high five and yell out Revit Rocket Ship, I will stop what I'm doing in my studio in sunny Jacksonville, Florida, reach up, receive that high five, and send one right back to you. How's that for a deal? Revit Rocket Ship, one hell of a foundation to build your studio on. A message from a currently unpaid spokesman. And I'm not entirely sure the promo code thingy will work, but go ahead and try it anyway. <laughs>